Have you ever had one of those nightmares where you're back in high school and you all of a sudden find yourself standing in the middle of the cafeteria completely naked? Well, people are staring at you, you feel exposed. These dreams evoke the fear that we all have of revealing our vulnerabilities, those things that we guard to protect people's perceptions of them. The engineering community is one with a long-standing emphasis on education and prestige. There is an established pathway to success and a perception that if you check the right boxes in the right order, that you'll get there. And when speaking to others in the geo industry, there's an underlying assumption that you must be an engineer or you don't belong here. Well, this is my naked in the cafeteria moment where I get to stand in front of all of you and admit that I am not an engineer. Engineers by nature are inherently very procedural. Um, they're concerned with standards and rules and find comfort in that little voice in the back of their head that says, follow the established path and kind of expect everyone around them to do the same. There's a lot of internal pressure to check the next box and when you do, another box appears. You're never quite done. So instead of this very straightforward path to career success like this, most of the time, life throws us something that looks more like this. So now you have two choices. You have the option to tune me out. I'm not an engineer, so what do I know anyway? Or you can tune in and maybe find a little inspiration in one woman's story about ditching the checklist and following your own path. So when I get to stand here in front of you today and tell you what I do in the industry, I'm literally describing my dream job. I am part of the methods development group for one of the top international manufacturers of specialty deep foundation equipment in the world, Bauer Machinen. I've had months of hands-on training from our repair department, parts and service, commissioning rigs, operator training, and I am the first woman in the world to successfully earn my operator license for our entire line of BG and RG rigs. Thank you. I get to utilize my technical field experience to help contractors get the most out of their machinery and solve their operational production challenges. I get opportunities to teach and share my passion for methods and equipment. And I get to interface with our industry on very important topics like rig stability and working platform safety. And I get to engage with our internal teams who are on the forefront of new equipment and instrumentation innovation. I absolutely love what I do, and I was built for this. But it didn't start like this for me. I am the daughter of a geologist and the niece and granddaughter of Bechtel alum, so it makes perfect sense I ended up in the geo industry. Um, but it was much more of a destiny than a plan. From a very young age, my dad was and still is my hero. He was so smart and interesting, he was always teaching me things, and I wanted to be just like him. So the writing was on the wall, but I still wasn't paying attention. And I went to college with a focus on a career in behavioral science, and my sights were set on law school after graduation. I really had no idea that a career like this one could exist for someone like me. So what happened next was a little divine intervention from the universe, and I came out of college and went to work for a large, well-known geotechnical contractor in that interim before I started law school. It took me less than three months, and I was addicted. I was in love, I was hooked, I was never going back. I didn't know what this was, but I knew that this was for me, and I wanted to make something for myself here. But unfortunately, the environment at that first employer was beyond difficult. Um, I was a young woman who was perceived as not having the right education or credentials to be afforded the opportunities I really needed to be able to grow. And I was constantly fighting an uphill battle of an unsupportive boss, um, a good old boy culture, and no matter how much 
passion or potential I showed, I really didn't get a fair chance. So at this point in my career, I had a lot of insecurities about not entering this industry the right way or with the right education. And I had a lot of interactions with peers at events like this where they'd be really interested in me and we'd be having great conversation until eventually it would come out. So are you civil? Are you geotech? And then I'd have to spend the next couple minutes word vomiting some sort of justification as to how and why I'm not an engineer with hoping that they wouldn't just write me off. So I had a rough start. And when I say start, I mean seven years start. <laughs> and there were so many points along the way where I could have had my spirit broken. I could have easily segued out and gone and done something different, but I knew that's not what was in my heart. And I wasn't going to let anybody tell me what I could or should not do. So I channeled all of that negative noise and all of the doubts and all of the setbacks and kind of used that as a mantra. And I used to tell myself, you think I don't belong here? Well, just watch me. And it took a little while and it took some creativity on my part, but I finally found the right opportunity for me with a smaller yet equally well-known geotechnical contractor. And uh, my first field assignment for them was at a nuclear power plant, which felt a lot more like going to war than building a tangent pile wall. But what I got out of that first project, which I had never had before in my career, was a crew of seasoned, experienced guys who accepted me and actually wanted to see me succeed. And they rallied around me, they took me under their wing, they taught me things, and I was able to find my confidence in a world in which I had been told I didn't belong. I found a voice that helped me turn all of this internal ambition that I had into tangible results. And the most important thing they did for me was they let me touch things that I had never been allowed to touch before, like the drill rig. And after that project, I was empowered to seek out and ask for more um, opportunities for education, like attending soil mechanics classes through the FHWA and anchor and micropile installation school through ADSC. And guess what? I got to run even more drill rigs there. And I took my enthusiasm back enthusiasm back to my crews, and it was so contagious. I had so many questions, and I just wanted to touch every piece of the production process, including installing my own micropile. And they bought into it. So at this point, I had found my spirit animals in the field. But what came next was my first real mentor on the upper management side a man who looked at me not for what was written in the education section on my resume, but for my personality, my work ethic, my internal strengths that I could bring to our project teams. And he paved the way for me to have the opportunities that allowed me to kind of show them what I could do. And guess what? I delivered. Turns out I'm damn good at building strong teams and complex construction projects. So I continued to make connections and mentors, and those relationships became more like friendships and ultimately more like family. And then over the next eight years, I spent my time learning and growing and failing and rebounding. We had hard projects and long hours. We had big wins and equally big losses, and we made big impacts in the communities that we worked in, and we had a lot of great memories, and um, I loved every moment of it. So I had found my voice, I had found my allies, and then I found a way to get involved in the industry and give back. And I built a deep and diverse network, and I got involved in committees and initiatives that helped women in construction. And then I found my face on the cover of the first ever Women in Construction special edition of the Foundation Drilling Magazine. I was the first woman to ever be on the cover of this magazine, and at the time that this was published, only the second person. So I was on the top of my PM game, and... <laughs> 
But I wanted more. At this point, I had discovered and defined more of my love for the equipment. And what I did next was follow my heart when it was time for me to make a new opportunity for myself. So I took my passion that I had for the work that we build and the equipment we use to do that and kind of combined it with my own unique personality and skill set and I offered to a company a role that they didn't have but quickly realized that they wanted. And I hired on with Bauer in my first three months. Um, I spent my time in Germany meeting new mentors, making new friends, and building a new army of allies for uh, my next chapter. And I'm not done yet. This path will continue to weave. So for all of us in a world and in an industry that is so fixated on these predetermined measures of success, I challenge you to redefine success for yourself. And for those who fear the judgment of choosing the unconventional, remember that societal norms are not the blueprint for fulfillment, that authenticity, passion, and resilience are really the architects of a fulfilling career. And discovering your unique set of skills and interests is really the key to finding the opportunities that others may overlook. Um, so I dare you to be you and to be yourself because choosing an unconventional path and following what you want to do is not about the destination, it's about the journey and about the growth and the impact that you can make along the way. So for everybody in this room or in our industry who started in the field or a vocational school, geology, construction management, psychology, whatever it may be, just remember, we are, we are built for this. Thank you.